The reports are uh, that you and Don Jr. and maybe one other have been working behind the scenes to convince RFK, Jay, that there's no path forward for him in this particular race, which is, I mean, whether you tried that or not, that appears to be the case, and that he should drop out and endorse Donald Trump and potentially get a role in his administration. Um, he has announced that he's going to be making an announcement on Friday. And when asked about this, he just refused to confirm or deny for now, but did say, I'm not going to say anything about Donald Trump when asked to condemn some of Trump's comments on climate change. Uh, so <laughs> what would you like to say about these reports? Oh, I mean, I I definitely didn't broker anything. Um, that's not my role in life. I'm not good at that. Um, I would never, I just wouldn't do it, you know, go to Bobby and say, you know, you can get this and go to Trump and say, you should do that. I mean, I, you know, it, my only role just in general is knowing a lot of people, liking a lot of people. Um, I always try to connect people just in general, you know, you should meet so-and-so, you know, it, so that, but I am not a political actor. I'm not good at it. I don't really understand politics. Most of my political predictions are wrong. You know, I stay at 35,000 feet, which is the only place I'm comfortable or competent. And the second, you know, I've been lured into saying, oh, this race and this state is going to go that way. I get humiliated because I don't really understand it. For <laughs> Same. Um, Same. So, Same. no, I didn't. I didn't broker anything. I, I know them both well, and I really like Bobby Kennedy. I always have. I don't agree with him on everything, obviously, but I like his spirit, which is um, in, inquisitive, pretty honest, I would say, actually, for a politician, very honest, brave. Um, I have a lot of the, I share a lot of the concerns he's articulated about health and the environment. I really care about the environment. I think Climate change is not human caused. I disagree on that. I think that's ridiculous, actually. Um, climate is changing, but we're not doing it. Uh, but I'm very concerned about the quality of the air and water and the soil. Very concerned. I think we all should be. And the more you know, the more you are concerned. I'm really concerned by some of the drugs people put in their bodies as a 22-year-long sober person. Um, I really love sobriety. I you know went to an AA meeting recently with Bobby Kennedy had the best time ever so we have a lot and and I and I'm a sportsman I love hunting and fishing and so does he so we have just a lot in common personally and um that's the basis of our friendship and of my affection uh for him on the political question I've already said I have no idea what I'm talking about and I really don't but this is my one insight which I do think is true is I have no idea if he does endorse Trump and these are two big personalities so I'll kind of believe it when I see it but if that happens tomorrow, um, I think it'll help Trump probably. I don't really know. But I know for a fact that Bobby running third party would hurt Trump because there is a big overlap in their voters. And it's not on all the issues. They disagree on a bunch of issues. But anyone who thinks the current system is corrupt um, is going to is not voting for Kamala Harris because she is, of course, the physical embodiment of corruption. And so you're voting for Bobby Kennedy or Donald Trump. That's the bottom line. And so I think if he stayed in the race, it would definitely hurt Trump. That's my analysis for what it's worth. There's a New York Post report out today that is it? Well, no, two days ago it hit, uh, talking about where how Bobby Kennedy is affecting this race between Harris and Trump, and it's very telling. Um, they're looking at some some recent polling and saying that take Arizona, Trump leads uh, Kamala Harris by one point in Arizona, and Bobby Kennedy there taking. 5%. So, I mean, important <laughs> enough that he could definitely sway that race. In Michigan, yes. um, showing Trump, uh, it's basically tied, 45 to 44. Kennedy drawing 4% of the vote. Nevada, another nail biter, saying Trump leads Harris there, 43 to 42, 6% behind Bobby Kennedy. North Carolina, um, 47 to 44 in Trump's favor, 2% backing RFKJ. So it is really interesting how tight it is. Pennsylvania, Harris leads, leads Trump by two points. And Wisconsin, she leads him by four points. Kennedy's at 4% and 3% respectively. So this guy, he may not have the votes that he had maybe you know six months ago when he was polling more like 11%. But he truly could swing this election if the people getting ready to vote for him 
did what he asked them to do and voted for, let's say, in this case, Trump. Yes, I think that's right. And there's there's a whole kind of demographic in this country um, that's meaningful in numbers and it's non-liberal nature people, kind of old fashioned hippie types. They're not all into neoliberalism, actually. A lot of them still believe in civil liberties. They appreciate nature. They don't want to see it despoiled with chemicals. They don't think Monsanto is like a great company necessarily. Um, and they look at Kamala Harris and, and who's not even a real person. I mean, it could be anybody, but they look at that machine financed by the banks and pharma and they think to themselves, you know, I don't have anything in common with these people. And they maybe look at Trump and they're like, who's that guy? He's weird. I don't like him either. But there are a lot of like right wing hippies, actually, particularly in rural areas. They have guns. They they live in rural areas. Of course, they use guns. And so I think those are all potential Trump voters. There are some style problems that turn them off to Trump, but they're definitely not on the side of like BlackRock at all. And mm -hmm. Bobby Kennedy and I, I live near a lot of people like this. I share a lot of their views. So I, I'm very familiar with this demographic. And I think that Bobby Kennedy is a is a pretty good way in to voting for Trump for them. He has credibility with them and for good reason. I share your concerns about what's happening with the environment and the toxins and you know, the food supply and all that. And I, it's funny, Tucker, you'll laugh because I, I <laughs> so I recently decided that I was going to stop getting pedicure. Like I get a pedicure, but I don't get toe polish. I don't get toenail polish. Yeah. And I'm like that, you know, I don't want the top. Would you look at me? Would you look at the number of toxins I have on me right now in my <laughs> hair? I'm like, not to mention the Botox. <laughs> like what a charlatan yeah. I am. But you know, it's like around the edges, Tucker, we do what we can to try to minimize the toxins coming into well, our that's lives. Totally that right. is where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if I'm being honest, I come from a family like that. Like, what's in your toothpaste? What's in your deodorant? I mean, I, you know, I'm 55. I grew up in California in the 70s where people were really concerned about this stuff. A lot of them were kind of dippy liberal people that we made fun of. And, you know, I still make fun of them. On the other hand, those concerns turned out to be absolutely real. And if you look at the rates of chronic illness in this country, I mean, it's it's destroying the country. Yeah. And I had a conversation last week with a woman called Casey Means. Who's I saw that she's Callie's person. sister, right? Callie's sister. Callie's a friend of mine and a wonderful guy, a wonderful guy. But his sister is one of the most powerful people I've ever interviewed in my, you know, in 33 years of interviewing people. I've met very few people like Casey Means. First of all, she has the credibility, the authority. She's top of her class at Stanford Medical School. She's a surgeon, okay, which is the highest level of medicine, obviously. And she left it all because she thought the system was so corrupt. But the compelling part of the interview for me was just the litany of health statistics that she threw out there. And the country's actually dying. And I sense that. I've read about it before, but I've never seen those stats collected in one place in the way that she did. And it's an emergency. It's an emergency that I would say supersedes all other emergencies. You know how much my family and I love our dogs. Yes, even my little Strudwick. Not so little, quite a presence actually. I can't imagine life without them, nor do I want to. They've had a great life and have one now. They're lucky, but some dogs are not so lucky. And that's why I'm so happy to tell you about Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, plus cats and horses too. They provide all the animals with shelter and safety, and most of all, with love. And they have been doing it for more than 45 years now. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions, and giving can bring tax benefits too. Talk to your estate planner about how you can grow your estate while helping animals in need. And check out the estate planning tab on their website if you'd like to learn more. We love our Thunder and our Strudwick, and we would love to find dogs who don't have homes like they do a loving, caring place to live. Delta Rescue helps the pups and cats and horses who need it most. DeltaRescue.org today if you'd like to help. DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.